I'll usually it? start off. Oh, yeah. that was my go? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> well, let me think. No, I'm just playing. Um, was there anything that surprised you um, about the way the, the defense played that you would like to get fixed before Duke? Yeah, I think there's a lot. I mean, I think we, uh, we made two really, really bad mistakes, two really bad errors. Um, and the first one was on a, a coverage that we've practiced a bunch. And it just, you know, I, I stressed to him yesterday, you know, we're, we're, every game we've played has come down, you know, whether it's the last play of the game, whether it was in six overtimes or the last play regulation, you know, so we, we can't give up a 55-yard touchdown pass. You know, and every, you, know, you look back at Wake Forest, and it was a very similar mistake. And so, we, we, you know, I got to do a better job coaching it. And um, we got to have a, a little bit better attention to detail. I feel like um, we talked to him about this the last two weeks. We've, we've, there's been a dip in the second quarter, I think, focus-wise. And I think that's something that we've got to do a better job coaching. Is there, can you break down the error on that play as well? As yeah, yeah, we, we, we had our eyes in the wrong spot. We should have, we should have, with, with the alignment they were in, we should have been in a little bit different leverage outside. And um, I got to coach it better. Long run, Long run was a really bad call by me. You know, we were, we uh, we had gone up by a touchdown, and I was trying to protect uh, the 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 throw game a little bit. You know, they had, they had banged some throws on us the drive before, really the two drives before. And uh, yeah, and, and credit to Virginia Tech, they had a really good play I think against what we had called, and uh, and we didn't get it tackled. You know, so you know it was kind of a rotation to, to cover two, and then our half field safety. You know, Miles got a little bit too wide. The ball kind of popped on him. Couldn't get back over top of it, and credit them. That kid's a good player. Yeah. Wish I'd have known a little more about him. What, did, what would be the, the number one primary reason why you guys had a little trouble with Patterson? You just alluded to the run play, but what else was? Um, I think I think he's number one. I think he's a good player. I mean, I think and I, I think anytime you're you're that committed to running the quarterback, you know, it's hard. I mean, it's it's ten guys blocking ten guys, right? So so now you know if, if you miss or one guy gets leveraged. There's nobody left, right? In the normal run game, you know, they're, they're, somebody's handing the ball off, so there's always an extra guy. So I, I, I think they did, you know, they did a good job of getting everybody blocked, getting, in, getting, you know, getting us into some some formations where, you know, we didn't have an extra defender a lot. And, and I think, you know, once we settled down, you know, I, I got to do a better job getting us into a defense where we can go play against whatever the the, the, the formation shift is. And we, and we were we were in some we were in some defenses where the the formation probably mattered too much. And I think that once we settled down with it I, after the long run, I think we were pretty good after that. You know, so th that's, the, that's the challenge with a, with a quarterback that, that committed to running it. When you go through the course of the game, you're not anticipating 25 extra plays after regulation or anything like that. Was part of it the number of snaps a lot of the guys played that just kind of wear down a little bit? Or is, is there, do you have, is there enough between, let's say, Aaron and Jason, where you can spell them some, where you kind of trust what you're putting out in the field? Yeah, we absolutely do. I just, I think the, the pace the game went. Um, I mean, in overtime, I, we gave up the one fourth and three for a touchdown. Other than that, they you know, they didn't get a first down. You know, so I, mean, I I think at the end we don't I don't think we were tired. You know, I I think the the early part of the game, we you know our offense did a great job controlling the football. And we didn't play that many snaps. And we came, we were in the halftime. I was mad at him because we, we we didn't finish the last five minutes very well. And we talk about that, and like I talked about earlier, but we hadn't played that many snaps. And, and I think we're in good shape. So um, it was just the flow of the game. We, we didn't, you know, it wasn't hot. We just they didn't they weren't tired, you know. And we're gonna listen to them a little bit too. You know, they they weren't ready to come out. You know, so um, you know we, they they probably played a little more than I than I would have liked for them to have played. Um, but I didn't think we'd go in six overtimes. You know, so uh, I think that's where the, the reps kind of got got added up a little bit. Overtime, though, you get to rest. The, the, between the, I mean, you, you guys know better. I mean, it's like ten minutes between the possessions with all the TV timeouts. So, how do you prep to defend uh, two point conversions, and what kind of goes into that defense when you're in that moment? And you obviously didn't know you were going to get that far into the game. No, so we have we have uh, we have about we have a handful of things we kind of go to, and I kind of tell them going out like I'm calling this because I'm expecting this. You know, so the the first two point play, you know, was was a a red zone coverage alignment that we we use a lot, and I thought we did a really good job. Storm made a great play, um, they did, you know. And then I, the second one, you know, we, we kind of thought they'd be in quarterback run, you know, and they just you know, credit them. They blocked us a little better than we got off blocks. You know, we kind of got it. We got one of our best players free to the ball and just didn't get him tackled. You know, so um, you know, I think we were in the right call both times. We just executed better than we did on the second one. I think did 
Duke is maybe one of the, may still be one of the best teams in the Pac-10 quarterback. Now, how do you get pressure on them? When they yeah, they do a great job. I, mean, I got a lot of respect for them. I've defended them a, a lot. Um, you know, the thing they do a great job of is they, they rarely hold the ball back there very long. So the, it, you know, the ball comes out fast. I think he is very aware. I think he's a redshirt senior that, that's been there for a while at quarterback. And I think he's very aware of where the protection faults could happen. So, you know, if you, if you, do, if you are able to get a guy, you know, coming free, he knows where it's coming from. And so he, the ball gets thrown. So they, they do a great job. Um, and I, and I think O-line wise, I think they, they, they don't get whipped, beat a lot. You know, you can't say I'm going to you know, get Jason on this center or this guard or this tackle like we felt some weeks, and he's going to win. You know, you don't feel like that as much against him either. So that, that, that's the challenge. I think the challenge is you've got to try to, you've got to, try to get one-on-one -on -one matchups that, that are favorable to you without selling out your coverage. And I think that's, that's what we're down there working on right now. Jay, are you familiar with pro football focus? So, mm -hmm. what are your opinions on their evaluations? I, I know what it is, but I don't really. I don't know if I look at their evaluations enough to have an opinion. But I know what it is. I see it. I see. I see it on. I see it on Twitter. Your, a good grade for Saturday. How, is, how does your opinion? How is your opinion of how he? How many tackles do you have? Seventeen. Yeah, he did all right. <laughs> uh, he uh, you know, he missed some tackles early. Um, one one that sticks out. It was bad. Um, he could have been better in coverage a couple times, but he uh, he, he, did, he did just okay. Yeah, he did just okay. Duke will come up five wide, empty backfield one series, and then triple option the next. How is that level of diversity? Yeah, I, I, I uh, so I, I I called uh, I texted Jeff Munkin yesterday, who I used to work for, and I said Duke's running, you know, they're running the double slot stuff. He goes really, I, and and I had told him a couple weeks ago when I first watched it that they were. I said yeah, it's it's their second no, uh, most numerous formation behind empty. So that's pretty. That's pretty. It's pretty good coaching right there. You can get that done. So, you know, you, 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 they are very multiple. They do a really good job. I've defended them the, the last few years, and I've had some good days and some bad days. So hopefully, we'll have a good day on Saturday. Anybody else? I kind of uh, want to go back to the Chaz question or whatnot. I mean, uh, I saw a lot of chatter about him during that game because he had 17 tackles and he was all over the field. And, you know, certainly. Saying, oh, this guy's definitely going to be a future, you know, NFL linebacker or whatnot. What are your thoughts about his potential? You know, not only to succeed here at Chapel Hill, but on the next level. Well, so I think he's got some skills that are hard to find. You know, I mean, he can really run. Um, he's explosive. You know, athletically, he, you know, he's going to blow the combine test away. I would imagine. You know, so he's still got a long way to go. You know, learning linebacker and being a linebacker you know, skill-wise to be at that level. But you see him improve so much week to week, you know, and then you got another year with him, you know, you, you start to be pretty confident he's going to have a chance to, to do that. So um, I think his skill set is absolutely NFL worthy. He's got to become a better linebacker to, to, to reach that. And I know he wants to, and he's committed to doing it. How remarkable do you think that is for him to make the transition from being quarterback to linebacker and be able to be that successful this back? Yeah, I've never heard of it. You know, yeah, I, I, when we first started talking about when, when, in this, so in the spring, you saw some flashes. You're like, wow, this kid, you know, maybe we, maybe we can play him on third down some. Maybe we can blitz him some. Um, and then in, in the summer, when you really started to see it kind of forming, you know, I remember asking Coach Brown, like, you ever? He's like, no. I mean, so, and not just, I mean, it's one thing if you're like a running quarterback or you were, you know, in, in high school, you're a running and they, they recruit you and they, and they recruit you as a linebacker. I mean, he started as a quarterback here in a pretty pro style offense, you know, so. You're a pretty talented kid. Yeah. I asked uh, Coach Brown about recruiting, and obviously it's, you can't talk about too many recruits, but it seems like it's taken off, taking off the defense side of the ball. Your take on the momentum right now with, with your recruiting? And, uh, um, I think we've got a, a outs, as good a head coach as anybody in the country, and kids want to play for really good head coaches. And we got a really cool school graduate like of yourself. So I think when you've got a really great school and you've got a really great head coach, kids are attracted to it. So And our fans have been awesome. I mean, the, the home games have been awesome. So you factor those in, it's easy to recruit. I'm not sure you want to single him out as a graduate, but um, what, what do you think's resonating defensively in particular? Um, in the, or sorry, in the recruiting side. Um, I mean, I, I think it's those, I think defensively it's, you know, when you walk down that hallway and you see some of the, the people that have played defense here, and it's pretty impressive. And, and I think Coach Brown's made that 
uh, you know, made, made that known to recruits that you can come here and be as good as anybody. I mean, two of the best players that ever played this game went here and, and played defensive end or outside linebacker, depending on what you call them, Ross. Um, so, um, but I think, you, you know, I think when you're able to get guys, when they can see it, and then, you know, like, um, we were recruiting a safety, and uh, he was talking to Coach Brown in his office with me. And Coach Brown said, who's your favorite player? And he said, Earl Thomas. Coach Brown said, yeah, I coached Earl Thomas. And it was just like, hmm, it's pretty cool, you know? So, like, I think when we get him in there with Coach Brown and he can talk about, um, you know, his career and what he's helped kids do, and then you look at the academic reputation of the University of North Carolina and then how great the fans are, the commitment to facilities, I just think the momentum is really, you know, really special. And I hope it continues. Anything else? Thanks, guys. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jay. Ross, you should have won.